So today I'm going to give you a quick review of this Fujifilm 90mm prime lens. It's the equivalent for DSLR of a 135mm, so you're really thinking about portraits, um, kind, of like, kind of medium to short telephoto lens, and this is the, probably one of the best lenses I have ever shot with. It is just super, super sharp. I don't think I've ever photographed with a lens so sharp. And so I want to give you some of the features of this lens, some of the reasons why you might consider this over the 50 to 140, um, and kind of think about which one would be best for you. Because when I bought this, I was having a look at, you know, I've already got the 56 mil 1.2, which I use for portraits and for food and, you know, stuff like that. Really good, obviously, for um, very low light, because you, you know, what f1.2, Gives you that ability and so I've I've owned the 50 to 140 in the past and you know when you come away away from the DSLR to a mirrorless camera one of the things you really miss for in the old days anyway was you missed your 70 to 200 and so when Fuji brought out the 50 to 140 which is the 70 to 200 in DSLR equivalent it's one of those things that you know so many photographers just use um, as part of their professional workflow but I used to own that and I loved it and uh, used it loads, but then I sold it and then I kind of came back to thinking, you know, should I buy that again? Or, you know, I'm a great lover of prime lenses. So I was thinking, well, maybe instead I'll go for the 80 or the 90 millimeter prime and see, you know, if I can use that in the same way as the 50 to 140. And so I undernarred for a while, looked into both and decided in the end that actually what mattered most to me was uh, a super, super sharp image and actually having something a bit smaller, um, lightweight, you know, mattered more to me than having the um, extra reach of the 50 to 140. And so anyway, I got this lens and I just cannot believe how good it is. As soon as you start taking with this lens, it just gives you such a joy when, when you shoot with it. You know, the F2 means it's nice and bright and fast. It's got this quad linear motor, which you can hear Think you can hear that um, and uh, yeah so it makes a little bit of a noise when you move it around but um, it basically means that it has got a super fast autofocus so you know this kind of is a, a fantastic lens for quick focusing sharp images and uh, beautiful bokeh if you really like soft backgrounds to your portraits then um, this is probably one of Fuji's best lenses for that. Um, I think the compression around the 135, which is what well, the uh, 90 is on this, um, the, the 135 just gives that beautiful compression on the, on the photo. Um, it reminds me a bit of shooting with a, um, a 200 millimeter prime. It is that kind of distance where you just get that um, really good uh, separation of the image to, uh, of, the, of the person to the background, you know. Um, it reminds me of some of the medium format cameras where you just get that beautiful separation from your portrait um, through to the background. And this reminds me of that when I've, um, I've been shooting with it. Now it weighs about 540 grams, I think. It's about 10 centimeters long. It's got the, um, obviously this uh, hood as well. And, you know, it's pretty light. It's, uh, when, especially when you compare it to the 50 to 140, which is a, obviously a bit longer and a bit heavier. Um, this is really light and you can, walk around with this all day, um, you know, without any problem. And so, reasons for buying? Well, if you've got a 56 mil and you're thinking, do I, you know, jump up to the uh, 50 to 140, or do I go for the 80, which has got the macro, do I go for the 90? Uh, you know, obviously, it's gonna be your decision to work out what's best for you. I know for me, I didn't really need the extra reach to the 200, and so what was really important for me was uh, image quality and uh, fast autofocus. You know, they're the things that I really wanted. Was a fantastic lens quickly, um, especially when I'm, you know, shooting indoors for events and whatever. You want to get that kind of quick shot. And uh, the 19 millimeter kind of gives you that opportunity, I think, as well, to do some good storytelling from a, a distance. You know, if you can't get near to your um, maybe you're at an event or something or a wedding and you can't get as near as you want to um, or you see something happening and you want to capture that quickly then you can kind of shoot from a slight distance and it just has this kind of beautiful magic around the, around the image um, I guess that's as the um, with the separation and then as the image blurs away you just get that beautiful um, dreamy like look um, um, to, to your photos so 
I would just want to say, if you are going, thinking about getting a longer lens, give this one a chance. Think about this one. You know, obviously it's a few hundred pounds cheaper than the 50 to 140 as well. So you're, you know, you are saving some money. Um, but I completely am so glad that I got this one instead of the 5140. Um, I've owned both. They're both great lenses. You know, you're not going to go wrong. Um, but I just feel like there's something magic about this lens that I've kind of never had before in a, in, um, in a lens. There's just something so good about the quality and uh, I just absolutely love shooting with it. So I hope this is helpful. Any questions, do just put them into the, um, into the comments and I'll do my best to get to them. Do subscribe to my channel if you uh, want to see any more um, of my reviews and videos. And yeah, I'll see you in my next film.